introducing this uh, next part of our agenda, um, I want to let you all know, um, because you weren't here when all of the founders were an uh, active part of IOBSC, and I had exposure to all of the founders, and it is a really exciting time for me to have uh, both of our founders, George Logan and Oliver Rang Wright, with us today. Um, it is a privilege for you guys to hear their story um, and hear from their mouths to your ears uh, the things that uh, they dealt with and why this organization was initially put together. We have our moderator, Pristel Askia, is going to come forward and tell you a little bit about herself. So let's enjoy this next part of the agenda. Thanks. Thank you, Venus, and thank you, Sears, for hosting this marvelous, marvelous conference. For those of you that I've not had an opportunity to meet, I currently sit in an advisory capacity for IOBSE. In addition to that, I'm an author, an entrepreneur, I am a motivational speaker, trainer, <clears throat> founder of the Askia Group, which is a consulting firm, I am a graduate of UCLA and Bill, Bill Titus. <laughs> I'm so sorry you went to SC. I mean, you know, what, what, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> the Little Red School House on the Hill. There you go. I am a certified protection professional, and I have been in the security industry for 30 years. That ex Thank you. <laughs> That experience includes industrial security. And so what we're going to do today, and in the effort to provide balance, is discuss industrial security, because that's what these two gentlemen and our founders have been exposed with, and likewise myself. But this is not about Prestel. Um, I will say one more thing for those students who want to come up and uh, discuss with either myself or our founders. My 30 years includes industrial security. I've worked with DOD programs, FBI, agency, all of those initialed organizations where if I told you what I did, I'd have to kill you. So, and we don't want to do that. But this is not about me. This is, this is about the founders. And I am truly humbled and privileged to grace this stage with these two gentlemen. They are indeed the founding fathers, part of the founding fathers team for IOBSE. And so what we're going to do today is have a conversation. And that conversation is going to explore a little bit about their background, their experience with IOBSE. We're going to talk about their values. And why values? Because it's the values, folks, that dictate who we are how we behave, how it is that we make choices. And if you don't get your values in order now, you're going to have one heck of a time as you go forward in life. So values are very important. By the way, these two directors are also the first two African-American directors in the United States. And we, we should be very proud of that. <laughs> So we're going to do some drill down today and talk about their character and what it is and who they are as individuals. And Bill spoke of the need to learn about leadership and character. That's what we're going to talk about today. All of the technical skills that you hone through school are important. Let that not be diminished. However, it's the soft skills, it's who you are, your values, your character that truly drive where you go in life and who you become. And that's what I want to talk about. Now, I've got a series of questions. These gentlemen have not seen the questions that I've prepared. Uh, and I'm going to begin by asking those. At each table, there are yellow cards. If there are specific questions that you want me to ask and to focus <laughs> wow. in on, please take those cards, complete Make sure that I get them. We'll also have mic runners to be able to manage the questions as well. So without further ado, I am pleased to begin the questioning of Mr. Wainwright and Mr. Logan. Mm -hmm. 
So the que first question I have for you gentlemen is this. What prompted you to pursue security as a profession? Two-part question. Secondly, was it intentional or was it accidental? Tell us about the experience. And now what I'm going to do is leave the room because I want the focus to be here. I'm going to wander around in the back. I'll have my body mic. I will continue with the questioning and you can respond to these wonderful, gracious people here that we are sharing this experience with. Good? Okay. Okay. Shall I repeat the question before I leave? What prompted you to pursue as security, uh, what prompted you to pursue security as a professional? Was it accidental or was it intentional? Well, my promptness came from, <clears throat> I would say it was accidental. I, uh, I'm a retired uh, military officer and I had a highly unusual career in the military. I uh, graduated from Hampton with a BS degree in biology and had intended to go into uh, to education. But in those days, you had to do two years after advanced ROTC in, in the Army as a reserve officer. And I loved the Army after getting that experience, so I, I transitioned into the regular Army, which put me in competition with West Point and all the others, and that was no sweat because I was a Hamptonian. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Now, in, during that career, I, I had a career in, in combat arms, uh, special operations, which is very popular today, was unpopular then. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of insight into terrorism, a lot of insight into countering terrorism. Then transition into the intelligence field, which is where I retired from, Defense Intelligence Agency of America, uh, in the intelligence community, running uh, the management faculty at the Defense Intelligence School, which is now the college. Uh, doing one piece of my uh, intelligence experience, the Army happened to have been the executive agent for, for defense security, which meant the whole spectrum of what, what we're doing now, we were doing in IBM, Honeywell. We had oversight because they had highly sensitive classified programs, but they still required background investigations, security surveys, uh, evaluation. It's the whole spectrum of things and that, 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 that you're, being, you're hearing about today. Uh, I didn't realize that I had this kind of experience that would allow me a transition into the corporate security field. So I, I took a course at, at a Catholic University called the Psychology of Career Transition. And it was taught by Dr. Stanley Hyman, a clinical uh, psychologist, and all of our assessments were, were confidential. And part of the graduation was you had to look at the psychology of the Fortune 500 community and go out and get yourself interviewed and get yourself hired. That was your evaluation. And you had to do all the right things. You had to buy the, the blue serge suit and the cap toe shoes and the the spread collar and the black and the white red tie. I had to do the whole IB in that, those days, the whole IB, uh, IBM nine yards. So we, we did all of that. And my first interview uh, it was almost like back in the intelligence world with, with a cover. I, I looked up the Fortune 500 and, and the Wall Street Journal and came here for an interview with Blue Cross Blue Shield downtown. And I used all of the Hyman's activities and got hired. And I had to break down and tell him I'm still on active duty. So the next one I got and interviewed and hired one was the steel company in, in Pittsburgh. And I still had two years to, to left on active duty, but I kept going to vocational and, and, and job fairs. And I went to one where an urban league, urban league had a table and they asked me what I was doing. I explained to him and I said, hey, have you thought about the industrial security field, the corporate security field? And that, that's how I ended up in, in, uh, in, in, in the security business as a security manager initially. It was purely, I was just guided and led that way. Yeah. Good, thank you. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> my introduction or my entry into security was quite different. It was uh, designed, it was purposeful, and uh, I had a game plan. I started out as a Philadelphia police officer. I ended up as a homicide uh, detective sergeant. 
Uh, 10 years later, I saw the uh, ceiling. Now, we're talking about the late 50s, early 60s, uh, prior to the Civil Rights Movement. Um, the glass ceiling was at lieutenant. I was a sergeant. And uh, I knew that I wasn't going to go any further. So after eight or nine years, I started to look around. I said, if I can't get to the command ranks uh, and police work, uh, then I don't want a 30-year career and be a sergeant the rest of my career. Uh, so I looked around at various uh, things that I thought I might do, and um, I couldn't come up with anything. I had a wife and uh, two children at the time. Uh, but I decided I was leaving law enforcement because, again, I, I just uh, uh, felt that um, I uh, would hit that ceiling and uh, couldn't go any further. Um, I saw an ad in the paper for a job uh, with a small security consulting firm in downtown Philadelphia uh, applied, and uh, they hired me. Uh, I was the first African American that they had. They did a lot of uh, work for law firms, insurance companies. And uh, I learned a lot about the security industry. I learned how to do a security audit, a security survey. Uh, I learned how to do investigations with, without the help of a badge and gun, where people were inclined to cooperate with you. Uh, I, lear <laughs> uh, I, I learned how to uh, interview and interrogate uh, from a totally different perspective and to uh, um, um, persuade people to confess to something that might send them to jail, uh, I found was a skill that uh, you could learn. Uh, and again, without any intimidation. So uh, I decided that uh, I wanted a career in security. Uh, during the four years I spent with this company, I uh, had a job with the Hertz Corporation. Uh, they had various uh, uh, thefts of uh, cars by their own people. Uh, so I had a chance to interview or talk to the uh, uh, director of security for Hertz uh, in New York. I was in Philadelphia at the time. I went over. And uh, after uh, giving him a briefing on what we had accomplished, I asked him, I said, well, how did you get to be director of security for Hertz and uh, uh, what did you do uh, prior to that? And he said, I was an FBI agent. And I said, you went from an FBI agent right into this job? He's, he's, yeah. So I said, well, you know, what about uh, uh, um, uh, the things that you had to learn uh, in private security? He said, well, you know, I just uh, uh, did it by the seat of my pants for a while, then I started to learn and pick it up. So I said, okay, uh, maybe this is the field for me. Not that I wanted to do something by the seat of my pants, but, uh, but it, it struck a chord and I started to investigate uh, companies. Uh, I looked at companies that had security uh, departments, security directors, and I decided that that's where my career was going. Uh, my career goal was to be director of security for a major corporation. Uh, I had an opportunity uh, at a company called Amco Industries. They're probably better known as Amco Transmissions, headquartered uh, just outside of Philadelphia. I applied for a job out there uh, during this time I was working with a private security uh, company, and um, uh, I was turned down. Uh, uh, a year later, I saw the same ad in the New York Times, and uh, I called the search firm that uh, sent me out to begin with, and I said, look, I said, you know, I see the same ad for the same job. I said, um, uh, I don't want to waste your time and mine, but uh, do you think I have an opportunity to get that job. He said, well, I'll call out there and uh, see what's going on. Uh, so he did, and he called me back, and he said, I want you to go back out. He said, they've had a change in uh, their uh, 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 manager of the security organization, and uh, uh, I think you'll get a different reception. So I went back out, had a quick interview, and I was hired on the spot. And I was told in no uncertain terms that I didn't get the job a year earlier uh, because of my skin color. And, uh, I, and no surprises, not in those days. I was not surprised. In fact, I suspected that. Uh, I got the job. Two years later, I was the director of security for that organization and stayed there for uh, about uh, two more years. I had an opportunity to go with Levi Strauss. Uh, at that time, they were the largest 
uh, apparel manufacturer in the world, based in San Francisco. Uh, I asked my wife about moving to California, and she said, uh, uh, when can we go? <laughs> <laughs>